Hey guys, I hope you guys are all okay. So today we're going to be trying to fix an, an SBEC, which is one of these. It's a YEP 20 amp SBEC. And when you see the oscilloscope, you can see that I've got two here on the bench. Uh, I'll zoom in, in a bit, but I've got one, the faulty one here and, and good one here. And the good one's showing a blue line and the yellow one is showing the faulty one. Uh, little bit of context because I'm not using this in, in in the kind of normal way you would use an SBEC because I'm trying to use it as a charger, a battery charger for a gasser helicopter. So that's a that's a two-stroke petrol engine helicopter. So if I just get the Mobius camera on a moment. Okay, so this is the petrol engine helicopter. Two-stroke it is. Uh, if I just get a bit closer and probably have to just alter this manually to get this in focus there you go so we've got a uh, a two-stroke petrol engine down here and there's a rod that goes all the way up here to this motor here now that motor is a turnigy 1000 kv if that's in short there you go turnigy 1000 kv motor and that spins and goes down here it goes through a three-phase rectifier I'm going to show you something similar because I've got some testing to do. Because uh, I've got I've got this one, I've got the one I was using, I've got a smaller one to trial out, and I've got an actual official package to see if I can see which one's the best. But that's not what I'm going to do in this video. Once it's gone through that, it comes down normally to these. Well, it came down to this this spec here, which is what we said. One of these. And this is actually currently faulty. Now, I know what you gasser guys are thinking. If you fly gasser helicopters, there's a lot of there's a lot of extra gear on here. But please remember that I'm a I'm an electronics guy. I wanna I wanna know when 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 something's going wrong. And in in all fairness, it saved me this time because the radio uh, radio master with telemetry, all this stuff on here sends back a load of telemetry data to my radio. And it told me that there was a problem with the charging system. And the reason I've got all these oscilloscopes out here, and we're also going to show that we can do it on a on a you know a cheap oscilloscope, less than thirty quid from uh, AliExpress, just in case you know we, we're on a budget, which I guess we all are. Uh, we're going to show that it took me a little bit of finding because the good old meter here, honestly, was telling me everything was fine. And it's not until I get the oscilloscope on. That I can see where the problem is. My my circuitry though did tell me that there was a problem. Let me get that in focus. I think I can get it there. Is it? Oh oh dear. Well, that's a module anyway. There's another module here. Right. Okay. Let's get back to the big screen and have a better look. Okay. So I've got all this powered up from this power over here, and it's got about 10.5 volts, which is what. A kind of the average that I would get now it's a gasser engine which a petrol engine so that means it, it it takes a bit of building up so although it's the head speed the you know the the rotors at the top is are on a on a governor when the governor and the flight controller see that it's dropping it does take a little bit of time to build that back up so you've got a bit of a fluctuating voltage and it goes from anything from sort of 10 volt up to maybe 11 or so depending on on on, on the uh, speed of the engine or the rpm of the engine but both these two ESCs, sorry, BECs, are now being powered by the same by the same power over here. And we can see that if we use just a meter connection here, if I get my lead here and just drop it on here, we can see I've got 9.61 on here and 9.47 on here. This one's the good one. This one's the fault, faulty one, which has been indicated by that yellow yellow line up here. And we can see that the meter, according to the meter, is perfectly fine. I know it's jumping about from 61 to 62, but if you look on the perfect one, this one's jumping about from 47 to 48. So that, that, would, be, that would be no indication of a problem whatsoever. And... So after having checked this and looking at things, and, and and every time I tried to fly it, it would tell me there was a that there was a, a charging issue. Couldn't quite find it, and then I decided to put the oscilloscope on the outputs, and this is what I can see. 
So we have to fix this. And to be fair, I've already done the fixing because I didn't want to waste your your time. And I can actually see it's a, it's a little on this. Let me zoom down a little bit if I can. Can I get that in shot up there? Okay. So what we can see here is that there's a little capacitor here. I don't know if you can see that in, in, in the shot. But this capacitor here is broken off. And if I zoom back out, oops, not zoom in, zoom back out, so we can see the oscilloscope. If we just twist that capacitor and connect it back up, then our line goes OK. So to be fair, what you're seeing here is you're seeing the switch. Is it, this, is, this is a basically a switch mode power supply where a little IC, which is just under this, under this, uh, this capacitor here, constantly oscillates and uh the, the more power it needs the longer the longer the oscillation stays on and the less and, and the lower the voltage that's required not power voltage uh, the lower voltage required uh it, it stays stays on for a bit little bit less etc so we've seen these things probably before and this is the output capacitor this is the input capacitor this is the output capacitor and that is just there to smooth to smooth the output out like that so we're just gonna have to solder that on so if I just connect up this little one, and I'll tell you what I do like about this little cheap unit is the fact that when I turn it on, it's instantly available, whereas this thing takes about 35 seconds to to to, uh, to warm up. If I put this, and I'm using a common earth, guys, here, because all these are earth, earth in the same place. If I put that on there, hopefully we can see, I'm going to see if I can bring that down a bit here. So let me see if I can. Get that more in shot. If I bring that down like this, I can bring that down there, and I touch the probe. So if I can get it in in focus, and I touch the probe on the same spot, we can see that it's not it's not very clear. And if I just try and move that with my finger, oh, if I just try and push that capacitor onto where it should be, then it then it cleans the signal up. Off off it's on. There you go, and it's on. So we could have we could have diagnosed that with this lovely, nice, cheap unit, and we can see that when it's when it's not working. What 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 I do like about this unit? Let me just get my earth lead back on, because it fell off. My ground lead, sorry. What I do like about this unit, if we can get that in shot, is that you see the the, the peak to peak here, v, VPP. It actually gives me a really quite accurate thing if I take that capacitor back off so it's not touching. So you've got a, a 0 0.7, 0 0.8 volt fluctuation there when it's doing that. So that's I quite like this guys. I mean to be honest, even though I've got the got got the big scope, that that is that is worth its money. That that is worth its weight in gold for I'm sure it was less than thirty quid. Just get the probe with it as well guys that I, I have done a review uh just a literally a, a couple of videos back on that and that is that, that's worth its money all day long in fact the other, the other good thing i like about it if you had two of those little probes you don't suffer from the uh common grounding that you that you do with these four probes where you've got to make sure that all the four probes are grounded at, at, at the same place and that can sometimes be a be a little bit of an issue just one more thing to point out about these guys I'm trying to keep this video quite quick because otherwise they can drag on a bit one thing to note about these is that they come with a little a little jumper here let me just turn that turn those off now for a moment they come with a little little jumper i'm going to dis disconnect the uh you see this little jump here so you can move this jumper around to choose the voltage that you need now a little tip guys now what we have done in the past we bought something called a castle creations back you can have this one for free and the reason why people buy castle creations a because they're overly you know they're really really expensive so therefore they must be the best must they yeah i think they must be the best because they're really really expensive and you can 
use a programmer to get almost an exact voltage well here's a little tip for you guys if you change that jumper there take it off and put a resistor let's say a 3k resistor across then you can alter the value let's see let's see what that does so i'll put the i'll put the jumper back on as supplied with the unit we'll zoom back out so you can see the meter okay we'll power we'll power it back up again and then of course i've not, I've not got my probe on there now so the oscilloscope's only reading this one and then i'll get my meter probe wherever that's gone down here so many wires and i'll stick that on here and you notice that i've got or i would have if i'd got this if i got my ground connection on here properly you notice that on the meter i've got 9.62 volts i'm going to pull that off and i'm going to put a 3k resistor across those two pins instead and now i've got 9.17 volts and if i put a i take that off and i put a a 1k resistor on instead sorry not a one a 1.8k on there instead now i've got 9.3 volts so using the different pins and using different resistors to join the pins you can really get any voltage that you want and i've had that working for some time because i i would normally fly with a with a 1.2 because that that gives my my exact uh what i want which is this one here and i put it on the seven volt pins here and that gives me the exact voltage that i like for charging my batteries which is eight volts i'm using lifey batteries by the way a two cell lifey on there and that gives me the exact uh, voltage that i need which drops down to a to about six point something, six point eight maybe across across the battery, and and supplies all my uh, all, all my servos enough power to drive the servos and keep and keep the battery charged up at all all times. I've been using that for some time, and as you see, I thought it had broken, but it was only the capacitor that's that, that's broke off the circuit board. It just occurred to me when I was watching that back that somebody might want to have a look at this uh, this gas monitor project uh, to see how far I've got with it. Now it did get. Uh, stopped uh, or put on pause during covid so i was i was working on this before covid then covid hit and we couldn't go out and do it do any testing and stuff so so this kind of it came to a bit of a bit of a pause and i i uh i started working on other stuff and i'm just trying to get back to it now as the summer and the better weather starts uh starts up here in the uk so this is where you can find it uh by any bone uh the gas monitor v1 uh, it is open source it's all available so so you can have a you, you can have a play around with it if you look down here in the readme, there's quite a few things about what it does. RPM sensors, voltage cells, temperature sensors, smart charging, smart vibration analysis, uh, static shock, which, although I've not done anything on that. I'm just in the middle of this now. Uh, this, this has just started, started coming together. Warnings, RF, uh, RX link, quality link. Uh, that's a very unique uh, thing. And it, I wouldn't say it took the internet by storm, but I upset a, a particular, uh, I'd say, manufacturer. Uh, because what it does, it allows allows you to pitch pitch two different manufacturers' protocols to, uh, together, with with the way it works. If we look at the wiki, uh, just quickly, if you look at the wiki, there's there's quite a lot of detail here. And if I go into the uh, link quality, what it does is it set it gets the uh, the radio master Tranus type uh, radio to send a known signal on, on one of its channels. And if you think about it, end to end, when it comes out of the S bus at this side, I mean the S bus. Don't care really what's happening in the in the middle. What I want to know is, does that receive exactly the same signal? And if it doesn't, if it drops in the middle, then I must have lost a frame. And that's that's how it, that's how it looks at that. So that's a that's a really unique way of testing of how many frames you you, you actually drop. Not relying on the RX lost frame counter, <clears throat> which sometimes tells lies. Let's say. So, yeah. So. There's quite a bit of in the in the, in, in the wiki here about all this and how, how to set everything up. So if you want to have a look at that, please do. 
go ahead and, 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 and download it, put it on, on a Teensy. There's all sorts of things about having up the Teensy and things and, and, and whatever you're on here. And how, how, to, how to get the telemetry back to your radio. So guys, I hope that was really useful. If it was, please like and subscribe. Do what the sign says and one day I'll point to it properly in the right way with the, with, with the right finger. But you guys are awesome. Stay awesome. Really appreciate you watching it to the end. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.